This is a budget Android phone and in this video I'm going to transform it into a Minecraft server. Let's get started. This is a Samsung Galaxy J7 Star, a budget phone from 2018. Its specs are very weak with only 2GB of RAM, 32GB of storage and an Exynos 7870 Octa SoC. It's a USA variant originally coming from Metro PCS branding and all. It launched with Android 8 Oreo and got one OS update to Android 9 Pie. And since Samsung phones lock the carriers of locked bootloaders, I am unable to force install a newer version of Android on this phone. The first thing I did after setting up the phone and logging into my Google account was opening the Play Store and applying all pending updates so that they wouldn't tank performance later. When they were done and Google Play had calmed down, I opened the developer options and looked at the RAM usage. With only 2GB of total RAM, you don't exactly get a ton of free room. On idle, 806MB is already taken up by the system. 391MB is taken up by apps which leaves me with 700MB of RAM free. Then I downloaded Thermox a terminal emulator for Android devices. For those who don't know, Android is based on Linux and is able to run Linux binaries. But on Android devices, you can't run these binaries without a terminal, which isn't installed by default. With a terminal emulator such as Termux, Linux binaries are able to be run. But the cool thing about Termux is that it contains its own repositories and a package manager. With these, Linux binaries are easily installable and runnable. To test this, I installed NeoFetch, a script that grabs system information and displays it on the screen. And it worked, fixing these amazing specs. Now, it's time to turn the phone into a Minecraft server. First thing I did was update the repository on programs by typing this command. Next, I installed OpenJDK 17, which is Java 17. We need this because we're hosting a Minecraft Java Edition server. Then, I ran Termux Setup Storage, which allows Termux to use the rest of the phone's storage. Then, I downloaded the server.jar file from Mojang, then echoed uela equals true into a file called uela.txt. The server will not start without an accepted EULA. Now it was time to start the server. I was able to start it with this command. It printed out this massive output, then announced that it was starting the server. Then it started generating the world, preparing the spawn area, and finally the server was joinable. The terminal turned into a console from where an admin can control, manage, and interact with the server. Since I'm only hosting locally, all devices connected to the home Wi-Fi can connect to the server. In order for players anywhere worldwide to join the server, I'd have to port forward. But that is a whole new can of worms I'm not willing to open, and I'm not trying to get DDoS. I added the server by opening the menu and typing in my local IP address as the IP, and it appeared in the server list with the message a Minecraft server and a blank server icon. I was able to join then I up myself, which turns me into an admin and gives me perms to do anything, but we'll get back to that later. I gave myself creative mode and started flying around and generating chunks. I exploded a small TNT cluster and the phone seemed to handle it pretty well, so I leveled up to a massive TNT cube with millions of TNT blocks. I ignited the TNT and it started exploding. It quickly started lagging and the TNT stopped exploding. The server reported that it couldn't keep up and it was running 148 ticks behind. About a quarter of the TNT exploded before the server crashed and I was kicked. When I tried starting the server back up, I kept getting out of memory errors but when I restarted the phone and allocated more RAM to the server by adjusting the parameters, I never got out of memory errors again and the server started. When I joined back, the TNT cube was intact, which meant the server crashed before it could save the exploded state. Using the console, you can do a lot of fun things on a server, 
like changing previous game modes, changing the time, insta killing players, giving players items, clearing players inventories, teleporting players, summoning mobs, killing everything that's alive, and broadcasting messages. I went into the directory the server was in and found a file called server.properties. It contains all the server settings such as the game mode, PvP being on or off, the maximum players, etc. There was an entry for MOTD which stands for message of the day and it's the text you see when you add a server to your server list. I changed the message and when I refreshed the server list, it appeared under my server. So this server performs decently well with only one player, but how does it perform with two players? I don't have another Minecraft account and I don't want to pay $30 for another one, but there is a method to bypass this. By opening the server properties and changing online mode from true to false. When the server is first starting, it doesn't authenticate with Mojang servers to verify if accounts trying to join are official. With third-party launchers, you're able to create local or offline accounts that allow you to play the game without an official account. The catch is that most servers won't let you join on an offline account, but servers with online mode disabled do. Offline servers are discouraged though, as when you start an offline server, it starts screaming at you in the console about how hackers can join the server with any username. So I joined on my phone and the server was managing two accounts well, until I lit the TNT. Now we're going to the next level by adding plugins for more features. For this I'm going to use Paper MC, which is a replacement server that comes with optimizations and includes support for plugins. I went to the Paper MC website downloaded the jar file for 1.19 and replaced the vanilla server jar with the one from paper mc then when i tried starting the server it refused to start and would always stop itself i thought it had something to do with the vanilla server and the paper server being in the same directory so i contained the paper server in its own separate directory i started the server and it downloaded a mojang server jar and several minutes later, the server was fully running. But since it generated what's basically a whole new server, it didn't have my custom properties like the custom message, custom image, and offline mode. So I quickly copied them over and my server was back. By default, the Paper MC console is color coded and fancier, but otherwise, it's very boring. It's time to install some plugins. I went to the Paper MC hangar. A place where loads of paper compatible plugins can be downloaded. Since our server box only has 2GB of RAM and a shit CPU, we can't go too crazy with plugins, so these are the ones I chose. I picked Geyser, which allows Bedrock users to join Java servers. Bedrock Edition consists of the mobile, console, Fire TV, and Windows 10 edition, and with Geyser, Everyone on those platforms can join Java servers with PC players. Then I picked Skins Restore, which allows players to change their skin to any other Minecraft player's skin. The next plugin I picked was Better Messages, which allows for fancier messages for when players join and leave the server. To install them, I selected the .jar files of the plugins I downloaded and moved them to the plugins folder of my paper server. Then I started the server again and in the console, the plugins were initializing. When I logged on, I got a custom welcome message from Beta Messages, welcoming me for the first time even though I logged on previously. Then I changed my skin with Skin Restore. I changed my skin to some well-known player skins, a random skin, then I reset my skin. Then I went back and installed two more plugins, via backwards and via version. Via backwards allows older clients to join modern servers 
and via version allows newer clients to join servers on older versions. So if you have both installed, players on both new and old versions of Minecraft can join your server. I started up the server and tried to join on Bedrock Edition but guys are asked me to log in with a Minecraft Java account. This is the meaning because most Bedrock players don't own a Java account. But by going into the geyser config and changing a setting named auth type from online to offline, I was finally able to join on Bedrock. So now, Bedrock players and Java players can play on the same server. Both accounts interacted with each other for a few minutes until the server crashed and both accounts were kicked. That's how I turned my phone into a Minecraft server. It's surprisingly playable and two players can play on it if they stay in close proximity or don't use a lot of plugins. If you made it this far, that means you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you liked it, leave a dislike if you disliked it, comment your thoughts and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Thanks for watching.